Hello friends, I am Dr. Sarthak, Associate Consultant in Narana Institute of Cardiac Sciences, part of Narana Health City, Narana Hrudalya in Bangalore. And uh, today we are going to meet an eminent uh, cardiologist in Bang working in Bangalore in Narana Health City, Dr. Praveen Sadarman. Uh, Dr. Praveen has had an outstanding track record of dealing with the uh, cardiac patients of various ailments. And we will be discussing today about uh, heart attack, the most commonly presenting cardiac problem. We will be trying to understand what exactly is a heart attack, how to help a patient having, having a heart attack. So to you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Sartre. It's a pleasure to be here and then to share my views with uh, one and all. Uh, we'll go to, as Dr. Sartre said, this is a very important topic and it being a World Heart Day. Uh, I'm going to talk about heart attack and more about door to balloon time. This is a new concept which actually has been there for a long time but has not come much into the public domain. So that is one of the reasons I have chosen this topic so that people are aware of uh, what to do in a heart attack and how to go about it and get the right treatment. Right sir. So what exactly is a heart attack? Heart attack is, uh, is damage to the heart muscle when there is blockage of the blood vessels that supply the uh, heart. So what right. we call the coronary arteries when there is a blockage uh, usually due to a soft plaque rupture where the, it forms a thrombus inside a clot inside and that causes a heart attack. So that blocks the blood flow and then there is uh, no blood flow to the rest of the heart. So that part of the heart gets damaged. So that is what is called a heart attack. And, and uh, why do we need to worry about it? Why is it so dangerous? Correct. That's a, a very good question. Sir. The, um, heart attack is the major one killer. Uh, the cardiovascular disease is the major one killer throughout the world. So the incidence of heart disease is much more in the developed world uh, compared to the developing world and the underdeveloped world. India obviously has been a uh, developing country and you know more and more people, uh, the living standards have gone up. Therefore, we are seeing yes. more and more heart attacks. India unfortunately has become the capital of heart disease, diabetes, as well as true. hypertension, high blood true. pressure. True, true. And uh, what causes a heart attack? What are the risk factors? Uh, there are numerous factors or numerous causes uh, for heart attack. Uh, what the risk factors, the main ones that we worry about is diabetes. So okay. that's something that, you know, uh, India once again, as I told you, is the diabetic capital. Second one is uh, hypertension or high blood pressure. Once again, India is leading in that. Indeed. Smoking is, you know, it's very well known. So I don't need to go more about smoking. True. Drug abuse. Stress has been identified more and more in the, in the current literatures as a very important factor contributing to heart attack. And this is much more common in the younger generation of, you know, the working age population. Uh, what I mean is about 40 to 60. We are also seeing a lot of younger patients who we didn't see. For example, I used to work in UK where less than 40 or about less than 50, the number of patients would be a small number. True. Coming to India and then, you know, we are seeing a huge number of patients in this category, especially with less than 50 years old, uh, having heart attacks. My youngest patient is 22 years old. True. So in 20s. So it is, you know, almost hard to believe that younger patients are having heart attacks. Heart attack. so There's a multitude of factors high cholesterol, bad lifestyle, eating. So th these are some of the, you know, the factors that we need to look into and then people need to understand uh, lifestyle is a very, very important part. True, true. And uh, what is ST elevation MI in a heart attack? Uh, I won't go into the medical details of how we diagnose a heart attack because I don't want to confuse people, you know, that they shouldn't be worrying about. Well, what is very important is when someone is having symptoms of chest pain, especially radiating to the arm or jaw or back, mm -hmm. and they don't feel well, they should seek medical attention immediately. And in a pro appropriate place. Absolutely. So the first, the nearest place, let them go get an ECG done. Yes, true. The e on the ECG, we doctors can diagnose what we call an ST elevation MI, where there is almost a complete occlusion or the, uh, blockage of the artery. Uh, and that is a... A, a very serious heart attack and the chances of dying from that heart attack is very, very high. So that is something that we uh, take very seriously and it needs emergency treatment. So they have to come to the right place from that. So 
true. I would suggest let them go to the nearest place, get an ECG done, see the doctor who is available and then they can be referred to the right place where they can get the proper treatment. Proper treatment. And uh, uh, a sequential question from that. So, how does that relate to a door to balloon time? What exactly is a door to balloon time or door to needle time as we say? Correct. So, uh, this concept has been there for many years and it is well known in the medical world. However, the reason I wanted this topic to be which, uh, you know, uh, discussed today is even the public should be aware of this because as I told you earlier, time is muscle. Muscle is what I am talking about, heart muscle. Yeah. So, the longer you delay, there is damage to the heart. So, once damage is done, that damage is permanent. So, the whole intention of treating someone with a heart attack is to minimize the damage, make sure that the best thing would be for the heart to have no uh, damage at all. At all. So, that, that is not possible in uh, many cases, but at least to try and minimize the damage. The longer you leave, the more damage uh, for the heart happens. With the symptoms. Correct. So, that is the reason it is very important to recognize early. That is the reason in my last question I already said, go to the nearest centre, get an ECG done. Once the yes. ECG, the doctor can see whether there is something that needs to be worried about. What we talked about an ST elevation myocardial infarction, where there are certain changes in the ECG and refer to the appropriate center where they can offer emergency treatment. Yes. So, the emergency treatment for this for sort of patients is they should come to the hospital where an emergency angiography and an angioplasty can be performed trying to open the artery. So, this door to balloon concept is that it is a time taken for the patient once they have landed up in the hospital in the emergency department to the patient going on to the cath lab where he is being uh, offered angioplasty and they can open the artery with a balloon. So, re-establishing the blood flow. That time has been very well established and it should be ideally 90 minutes but ideally 60 minutes if possible because yes. time is muzzle. So, the sooner you do it, the better benefit the patient gets. True, true. Right, sir. And, uh, and you also said about the door to needle concept. For example, if someone, let's assume, someone is not in a major city where there is facility in a bigger center for someone to have a angioplasty done, then uh, they can go to the nearest larger hospital where they can do what we call a thrombolysis where you can give a clot busting injection and those injections will partially help the clot to dissolve and then re-establish the flow. So, this time is called a door to needle uh, time and once again this should be less than 120 minutes. So, sooner the better. So, these are the important concepts. So, the, basically the message I am trying to give to people is recognize the problem sooner and go to the best center available uh, so that this treatment can be given. So, uh, you know, before any damage happens, that's the ideal scenario. That's, that's true, sir. And what is this first medical contact to balloon time? Correct. So, the, the, you, uh, as I've explained now, the door to balloon is the one, the ones that come into the hospital, which has got the facility for an angioplasty. Right. So, the first medical contact would be someone, for example, if you're staying away or even, you know, if, even if you're in a big city, the nearest medical person, for example, if there is a general practitioner who is near your place, you can go to the general practitioner, they can do an ECG and most doctors, um, I would say almost all doctors will be able to identify the ST elevation and then refer the patient to the right place at the time. At the earliest time. Correct. And that time should ideally be less than 2 hours, so 120 two minutes. Hours. So, all these concepts is once again, you know, whichever way we take it, it should be less than 2 hours. Two. So, uh, and how can we better. how can we achieve this time limit of two hours in a big nation with the diverse uh, geography and political situation like India? Correct. So obviously there are lots of challenges. Uh, these challenges are not only for India; it's a worldwide challenge. But over over the years, over the last twenty years, this concept has been there, and in the Western world, that is why there are dedicated cath labs, dedicated hospitals where they are able to. Uh, take the patient as an emergency basis 24 bar 7 so that the patient can go to the uh, cath lab and get angioplasty done. To facilitate that, there are dedicated emergency uh, services, like, you know, ambulance services ambulance. where yes. the ambulance drivers are aware where to take the patient. Right. So, that has become a smoothened system. For example, if, uh, if in a western world, if someone has a heart attack, 
they call the ambulance and the moment the ambulance comes they do the ecg themselves and they are they are trained now they are the paramedics so they are trained to read the ecg if they think this patient needs an emergency angioplasty they will take it to the nearest hospital which has got the facility right the same thing should also happen in india that is what i am urging people to one as i said is awareness of the problem so the first step is the patient or the relatives the family members assume you know coming to terms that there is something wrong that this need to see the uh, the family or the, the family physician or the the nearest doctor so that is the first step once the fa- patient has initiated that they gone to the doctor the next step would be to uh, for the doctor who has seen the first in the first medical contact first medical contact that first medical contact person has to realize that this is an emergency and then they have to send to the uh, right uh, hospital which has got the facility Right. Obviously, then comes around how we transport the patient. The good thing is about in the last few years, obviously the uh, the ambulance system you know, throughout the country has improved. We've seen that during COVID times, where you know they were uh, constantly carrying patients from one place to another. So th- we have definitely improved our uh, ambulance uh, ambulance service. But once again, that has to improve more. We cannot just stop and say, "Fine, we are done with what we are, and this is a, the best system." There's definitely a lot of room for improvement, but we have taken the first step towards that. Exactly, agree. So I, I think there's a lot of work to be done. But once again, you know, uh, I urge my viewers to consider two things. One is that be proactive. Do not ignore it. For example, even if you think it may not be that severe, see the first medical responder. So the see the doctor who is nearby, and then once something has been recognized, do not waste any time. So go to the uh, the nearest. hospital where they got the all the facilities to do the emergency treatment so these two things are going to be the key for a good outcome so good outcome i mean even survival as well as as i said survival is not enough okay good quality of life it's a good quality of life because once the heart is damaged the patients will then have heart failure heart failure is much more difficult and then there's a lot of symptoms limitation disability and all those things so that is that should be our goal not only survival but also a good quality of life true and do we offer this uh, door to balloon time prompt emergency response system for a uh, patient with a heart attack facilities the, the the thrombolysis or the angioplasties in narayana health city we do uh, we are very fortunate uh, in our unit uh, where there's a 24 by 7 uh, emergency team ready to take on the patients so it does not matter whether it's morning night day midnight so 24/7 we have got an emergency team on standby so at the moment the uh, the, hosp- the patient comes into hospital or sometimes we get phone calls from the general practitioner sometimes the patients themselves because we got an emergency number as well right. so the way the patients are able to call that emergency number and then we got dedicated ambulance where we can dispatch to the patients uh, you know patients house or patients wherever, house they, wherever they are staying so we can get those patients directly from there and then you know we can by the time the team is all ready so the moment the hosp- the patient reaches the hospital within 5 10 minutes the patient is on the table and yes. you know one hour later the patient is out of the camp plan so True. we have got a well oiled system here which has been working very well and uh, i'm very proud to say that we have been doing this service for a good number of years now true, so true. this message is trying to uh, get across to people so that you know people are aware of these facilities that we providing true and uh, how can the patients get in touch or get in, get more information about this, uh, these set of services that we have so there's a lot of information general information available on the internet but once again i would be cautious in saying that there's a lot of good information bad information mixed information on google so please if you are really literate about that topic you will be able to filter out what is good and what is not so if you are not sure please speak to the doctor also on our own website narayana website we have a lot of patient related information which we are right. able to provide and anyone you know across the world can access those information and then know more about these conditions uh if they want further more uh, you know, yeah, advice information they want to talk to one of our doctors we are always available either they can visit us physically over here or we do online consultations because there are a lot of my patients all through the world now you know uh, different from you know different parts of india 
Delhi, Jaipur, you know, uh, Bangladesh, uh, Calcutta. So a lot of right. patients, I'm seeing them through video consultation. So True. technology has been a great uh, boon for these patients now. So uh, it saves a lot of time for them to come here and then uh, not any, you know, I'm not talking about emergencies, but non-medical emergencies can be easily sorted out. And I'm very successfully doing uh, online consultations for all my patients. So, so even in patients who are in Bangalore because of, you know, the COVID times, they were afraid mm. to come mm. across. So True. all these patients, I'm seeing them by video consultation. The patients are happy. I know my patients are safe. So that gives a, a fantastic opportunity. So we should make use of this online consultation. The good thing about this, the government has also opened up because previously online consultation or non-physical consultation was not allowed. Yes. Now the government has realized that it is, you know, it's a good thing that we are able to uh, manage Give advice patients. to them at least on right. the, the, uh, the video and, consultation And I platform. hope they continue the same. So the take home message uh, from this interaction would be to realize the, the viewers, they should realize that there might be something going wrong with a certain set of symptoms, namely a chest pain, a burning sensation in the uh, abdomen or basically a sense of discomfort on exertion, on walking a few steps, uh, which would be happening uh, from a, in a short duration of time and then it starts worsening. If you face these set of problems, do not neglect it, get an ECG done, do not just pop in some pill from somewhere and uh, try to see uh, whether you are uh, going to you know, feel better or not. Do an ECG, it doesn't cost much and it might just save your life. See, get the ECG done, get it reported and if there is a trouble, we are there to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.